Hello, Keith Rucker here at BenjaminStreaming.org. Got a little quick video I'm going to share with you guys today. A little repair job we're going to be doing for the museum. Uh, we're a volunteer at Georgia Museum of Agriculture. And uh, what I've got here is a valve, it's a steam valve off of the uh, 1917 Vulcan Iron Works uh, steam locomotive, a little narrow gauge engine built back in 1917. And specifically this valve here, what this is called is it's called a tricock. Uh, T-R-Y, uh, tricock. There's three of these on the boiler in the cab of the engine. And uh, you can basically use this to manually uh, check the water level in the boiler. Uh, keeping the water level above the, uh, the, uh, uh, the crown sheet in the boiler is extremely important. And normally you do that by looking at a sight glass where you can actually see the water level. But things can happen, uh, unfortunately, occasionally. I, I've never had it happen to me on the locomotive, but that sight glass can break and you have to shut it off. Uh, it can malfunction, it can get clogged up. Things can happen to that sight glass where it's not reliable. Uh, and when that happens, you have your backup, which is these tricocks. And again, there's three of these mounted on the boiler at different heights. And uh, the engineer can go and open these valves up and depending on whether he gets uh, water, wet steam, or dry steam, he can estimate uh, the water level in the boiler uh, fairly accurately, at least safe enough to be able to operate the locomotive without fear of the water going below the crown sheet. So this is one of the tricocks off of the steam locomotive and this particular one had developed a little bit of a leak where it was actually uh, bypassing past the, the, the valve seat in here and they were just getting a constant stream of steam out of this particular nozzle even when this valve was completely shut down. So we have pulled this valve apart and uh, I'm going to take it apart now. We've actually taken it apart and already inspected it. Uh, I'm going to show you how this valve works and show you how we're going to fix it. So here's a little close up of the actual valve and I'll be the first one to just tell you we've already taken this apart, inspected it, kind of come up with a game plan on it. So it's not all tight right now. I want to show you how it comes apart. Obviously uh, in operating condition you'd have to have wrenches and stuff to do this. Right now it's all finger tight. Uh, but I'm going to start. We'll remove uh, the little nut on the top that will remove the handle. Uh, next thing is this little uh, piece here and uh, ba what this does is this has actually got some packing up inside of this. So this is all just some cloth graphite type packing uh, and you put this on here and squeeze it down tight and as you squeeze it down tight, screw it down on here, it tightens that up and it basically will prevent any steam from leaking past this valve. Uh, most water valves, steam valves, etc. are going to have this and if you get a little leak you just tighten this up a little bit and occasionally you have to change the packing out in it. And we'll go ahead and pull that out and uh, we will probably change that packing. That's the packing that was in there. Next comes uh, this piece here. Uh, this whole top part unscrews from the valve body down here and when it does you can see that this is the stem and this is where you have the little needle valve in the bottom. This has a, a 60 degree included angle on it. Um, and that goes into your seat in the bottom and when you turn the valve it raises and lowers in there because it's threaded. So you can see a fairly coarse thread in there. So this seat basically goes down in here. And what's happened is over time uh, this seat has gotten worn down. Uh, this is, you, I can actually see a little step in here. Uh, so we need to redress this angle to get it back to 60 degrees. Whoops. And we also need to dress the, um, the, the seat down here in the bottom uh, to get it back. And then once we machine those two parts, we will take it and we'll lap it together uh, to make sure those two mating parts are perfectly in line. And then the valve should be good once again. So uh, that's the game plan uh, to move forward. So we basically have to dress these two pieces, lap it, put it all back together. So in my collection of old tools and what have you, I actually have this set here, uh, which is made specifically for repurposing or redoing uh, old valves, old steam valves. This is a, actually just part of the set. There's a whole box over here with some fixtures and stuff that hold all these pieces together. Uh, but you see we got some pieces in here for doing that seat in the bottom with the angles on them. And also as the valves get bigger, they 
same type thing here. And my plan was, was I was going to pull this thing out. I've never actually used it. And actually, I know that my set's not complete. And uh, I wasn't exactly sure if I got everything I needed, but I was going to try to use this. And, and also, just by the way, Dale Derry, uh, who has uh, um, uh, Metal Tips and Tricks YouTube site, he actually found this somewhere or another and, and gave it to me uh, a while back. But my plan was to do this, but when I came in here and started looking, well, the first thing I realized is, is that I don't really have a piece that is quite small enough to fit into my hole down there and also the angle on these 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 look like they're 45 degree angles whereas mine uh, is 60 degrees so uh, that's really not going to be what we could use or going to use but it kind of gave me the idea okay I need a tool something like this to get down in the bottom of there to reseat that and um, came up with my solution so here's my valve and uh, what I've got is a center drill. And I know that the center drill is a 60 degree angle on there. Uh, because that's what we use on the lathes uh, for putting in our, our drive centers and what have you. So I had this number seven and it was just a little bit, not quite, just would fit down inside this just right. So I, I'm, I'm, I'm cheating here a lot. I took some electrical tape, put around this so I get a nice slip fit in here. You know, that right there is going to kind of help me align it. And I'm literally just going to spin this thing by hand. This is brass. And um, um, when I look down in there, it has reseated that bottom. And we're going to lap this in to get it just right. So even if it's not perfectly in alignment, this is going to be close enough uh, for us to come back in later and lap these together and actually get them but I know I've already got my flashlight and I've actually already done it off camera but uh, I've got that little groove that was down in the bottom that the steam cut it is cut out now so I've got good surface all the way around and uh, we're ready to go ahead now and get this part dressed so I think that the bottom here is going to be good it's not exactly the right tool but hey sometimes you improvise and uh, I think this is going to work just fine so we're set up now over on the LeBlanc lathe and we're going to go ahead and get this uh, cut back in here now to this proper angle. So I mounted my uh, collet chuck ups, first time I've used this and I did check this minimal, minimal run out, uh, probably about as good as I can do with a four jaw chuck. So we're just going to chuck the part up in here, in fact it already is, in the collet which is perfect. Uh, I've got my compound set on that same 60 degree angle here. Um, and I've just kind of confirmed that by running up and down next to it. So we're just going to come in here now and get that cleaned up and dressed up so that it's uh, got a nice finish all the way across it. Uh, that should match that seat that we've already uh, put in the bottom and we can lap them together. So let's get her done. Got the lathe running at uh, its highest speed, which is 600 RPMs uh, on this brass. So I'm just going to come in here. I'm not touching there. I'm just going to manually bring the carriage forward just a little bit. See the area there that's worn. And we're just going to keep taking a little bit more and more until we get it cleaned up. put the lathe in a lower gear now <laughs> yeah and that loosen right up and I'm happy with the way that looks everything looks real good 
So I got my valve body here uh, with the seat is in a vise, uh, hold it still. I've got my stem here with the new angle on there. Um, this, when I put it down in here, it was just a little bit loose. I took and just wrapped one coat of electrical tape around there just to kind of make that a little bit tighter as a guide. Unfortunately, the top part when I put it on here because it's screwed in there, whenever you do it, it's screwing it up and down and it's not free spinning. So, and also I can tell by just screwing this thing, this thing, it's got a little bit of wobble in it. That seat's gonna find itself when it gets down to the bottom. So I'm not worried about it, the alignment being just perfect here. Uh, we would just want to get a good seat in the bottom lapped in and we should be fine and it's probably good enough as it is but to be on the safe side I've got some valve grinding compound here some lapping material so uh, we're just going to take a little bit we'll uh, put some on here this is just a basically an abrasive grit that's kind of in a slurry form and we're gonna drop that down in there. Let me get something to wipe my finger on. And I'm just gonna do this the old fashioned way, the same way you, you grind in valves on an old engine is I'm just gonna basically come in here and we're just gonna go back and forth and let that just kind of grind itself in. You know, I can feel it when I first started. It was kind of a little bit rough, and even just this little bit, I can already tell it's smoother down in the bottom. So I'm not gonna bore you guys to death with this. This is gonna probably take 15, 20 minutes to do, uh, but we're just gonna lap that in until we get a nice, good surface. And I can take a flashlight, look down in there, and when I see a nice frosted surface with it clean uh, on both surfaces, I know it should be pretty well lapped in. So there we go, we got it lapped in. It actually lapped in in about less than five minutes, uh, which tells me that my angles were very close, uh, which I have no reason to believe that, that why they wouldn't have been. So uh, I'm real happy with this. We've got that nice frosted look on there. Uh, you can't see it, but when I look down inside of here with a flashlight, you know, I got that same finish down in there. So this should be all ready to go back together. And to reassemble it, we'll just start here with the little valve put that in actually I think what we'll do is we'll go ahead and uh, screw that all the way up in there like such then screw that together I'm not gonna worry about trying to get these tight right now we'll do that uh, once we put it on the locomotive this packing nut goes on and then the handle and now when I crank that down I should be getting a nice seat in there uh, we'll get this reinstalled on the locomotives uh, and they'll be running it this weekend and we can try it out under steam but there you go one valve reconditioned <laughs> well there you go guys a quick and dirty job on uh, common stuff we have to do around all of our steam equipment this isn't the very first one of these I've ever done uh, by any means uh, but you see the process that I use uh, different valves are different some of them have different types of seats in them uh, this is the first time I've ever done one of these tricocks like I said there's three of these on there and uh, you know quite honestly I probably just need to go ahead and pull the other ones off and do those uh, and get them all reconditioned but the other ones aren't leaking right now so this one was kind of the the emergency one that needs to be taken care of but we'll get these reinstalled I'll try to get a picture uh, showing this uh, back on the locomotive so you can kind of see how it goes in there where it is uh, and uh, just so you can have an idea of what part this is and where it's on the locomotive uh, and with that that'll be a wrap thanks guys for watching we'll talk to you later